Let's review what we know about the three phases of collisions. In phase one, the colliders approach each other with their initial velocities. Each collider's mass and velocity is used in calculating its momentum, which is mass multiplied with velocity. In phase two, the colliders exchange momentum through a force interaction. This exchange of momentum is controlled by a number called the coefficient of restitution. In phase three, the colliders move along at their new outgoing velocities. The outgoing velocities will always give you the same total momentum as the incoming velocities did. The part of this process that makes collisions behave differently is the coefficient of restitution. You can think of the coefficient of restitution as a measure of how much kinetic energy was lost during the interaction. A coefficient of one means that no kinetic energy was lost during the interaction. And a coefficient of zero means that the most kinetic energy possible was lost during the interaction. When the coefficient of restitution falls between zero and one, we have an inelastic collision. Here is our code from the previous video that creates two colliders and then takes them through the three phases of a collision. Let's try the code with the left collider coming in and the right collider stationary and with both colliders having the same mass. Let's start out with a coefficient of 0.9. The left collider gives most of its momentum to the right collider, but it also keeps a little momentum, and so it continues to move forward at a slower velocity. If we calculate the momentum of each collider, we can see that the total momentum in phase one is the same as the total momentum in phase two. However, if we calculate the kinetic energy of each collider, we can see that we lost a little kinetic energy during the collision. If we decrease the coefficient of restitution to 0.7, we can see that the left collider keeps even more of its original momentum, and so it continues to move forward at a little faster velocity. Again, the total momentum is the same during phase one and phase three of the collision, but there's a greater loss of kinetic energy. The lost kinetic energy usually crumples the colliders or escapes as sound or heat. Although our code does not depict where the kinetic energy goes, you can imagine these energy transfers from real life examples. Another interesting case to examine is what happens when the colliders approach each other with the same mass and opposite velocities. With a coefficient of one, they bounce off of each other and exchange velocities. With a coefficient of one half, they bounce off of each other with half their original velocities. With a coefficient of one tenth, they bounce off of each other with one tenth of their original velocities. And with a coefficient of zero, the lowest possible value, they stop each other entirely. There are lots of ways to play around with this code. Follow the link in the description below to find a set of activities to guide you in learning more about collisions.